Hey guys, Squatch Reloading here. We're going to keep pressing forward in our 223 Remington series over here on the Redding T7. Now, at the beginning of the series, I told you guys we're going to be using uh, the two-piece RCBS uh, die set. It has a full-length seating die. It also has a seat and crimp combo die. Now, I've said this a million times. I am not a fan of combo seat and crimp dies. So what I have, I have our combo seating die with the seating stem and then I have a spare combo seating die uh, that has the crimp feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this die in, back it out, uh, deleting the crimp feature, and then we're going to apply the crimp feature from my spare seating combo die uh, to finish out the uh, cartridge. So we're going to get these dies set up. I have a mystery powder with the mystery amount of grains that we're going to throw on our Uniflow powder measure. If you guys uh, are not sure how to set those up, uh, there's several videos I got uh, showing how to operate that uh, powder measure. But that's how we're going to finish these up today. So stick around and let's get to it. All right, so to set up our, our seating stem, our seating die, we're going to index over to the next station. I got a cartridge here that we've processed. We're going to use that to make a dummy cartridge. And we're going to take this combo seating and crimp die. We're going to back the seating stem out. You know, not all the way, but quite a bit. And this lock ring all the way to the top. We're going to go in a few threads. So the first thing that we need to do is delete the crimp feature out of this. And here's how we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to run the ram up with the cartridge in. And we're going to run this die down until we bottom out. And when we bottom out, we're actually bottoming out on the crimp feature. So right there, I'm bottoming out. And I'm going to go a complete turn. And I'm going to bring my lock ring down. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. Because we don't want that crimp sneaking up on us while we're trying to seed a uh, bullet. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to get this seating seating stem set. And for these, uh, we're going to do 2.24 inches total. So I'm going to place a bullet inside the cartridge. We're going to run it up into the die. And we're going to bring our seating stem down. And I can feel that I am kissing the bullet. So I'm going to back it out a little bit and just give it a big turn. And now we're going to we're just going to soft, soft set it. You can see we've got the, uh, the bullet into the cartridge, but we've kind of got it soft set. Um, so now we've got to take our calipers and start dialing this in. And how we're going to do this is we're going to make small adjustments, keep measuring until we get it. And these we're going to run at 2.24. All right. We are just about there. Let's see what we look like here. Two point two three nine and a five. That's uh, pretty darn close. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run this back up in the die, and we're just going to go ahead and snug up our seating stem. I'm going to place a screwdriver on top just to make sure I don't, you know, let it rotate anymore. I'm I'm happy with where we are, and just button it up like so. All right, so. Here's our completed cartridge, and uh, we're going to work on this crimp next, but we're going to talk about crimp real quick. To crimp or not to crimp? That is a very common question, and it can go either way. A lot of guys have never crimped in their entire life. Um, some guys swear by the crimp. Uh, for me, what all I'm looking to do is uh, just close the gap up around the bullet, so I'm a fan of crimping. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a very slight, slight crimp. And all I'm looking to do is close the case mouth up onto the bullet. That's it. Um, you can totally get away with not crimping. Um, there's a lot of theories about, uh, you know, the bullet moving around, uh, your case overall length changing, especially in some of the higher uh, recoiling. Uh, actions and so on or or 
like a tube fed magazine I know this doesn't apply but you know rattling around uh, in the magazine uh, pushing the bullet backwards but uh, as far as crimp goes you can totally get away with not doing it but uh, for me I'm gonna go ahead and put the crimp on slight crimp and I'm gonna show you guys how I do that all right so our crimp die well we don't necessarily have a crimp die uh, Lee factory crimp die would work good but I have this extra uh, seating and combo uh, crimp die. So what we're going to do is I've taken the seating stem out, as you can see, and all I'm really going to use it for is the crimp feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the head around, the turret around. We're going to go in a few threads just to get the die centered up. I'm going to bring the cartridge up into the die, and I'm going to thread it down until I feel the crimp portion engage the cartridge and that and that's it so once I get it okay I can feel it's 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 uh, engaging the brass so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back my ram out give it about an eighth of a turn run it back up into the die and I'm just gonna visually look and what I'm looking for and this is gonna be very hard to see is I'm looking for that bullet that cartridge there's no gap around the bullet in the case mount that's all I'm looking for and Quite honestly, we are very close. So I'm maybe, I'm not even going a quarter of a turn. It's, it's between an eighth and a quarter. And I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I'm closed up on the bullet. So what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna lock that die in and call it good. And then uh, basically at this point, we're, we're ready to start dropping powder and and loading all right we're going to get our powder major set up quick tip for you guys uh, an old dryer sheet in your powder hopper really uh, eliminates a lot of static and you won't see that building up on the side of the uh, powder major so we're going to go ahead and get some powder in this bad boy just a fuzz over halfway is where i like to go um, we're going to go ahead and load up a bunch here, so I'm going to just get a good good amount of powder in there. All right. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to, going to uniform the powder major here. I'm going to give it some, some love taps, and you can see that powder settling in there. And that's exactly what we're trying to do is uh, we're just trying to reduce the amount of throws we got to get or to make to, to get a good throw uh, consistently. So I'm going to go ahead and make a couple drops here, you know, making sure that we get a full stroke up and down and be very representative of what we're going to do when we're reloading. Okay, so I've got my powder measure dialed in. It's throwing uh, right what I'm looking for. And how I'm going to do this, I'm going to do these one at a time into the powder measure and I'm gonna fill this load block up. And I'm gonna do them one at a time. I'm not gonna load this up and go back and forth, you know, like a magazine. I'm gonna do them one at a time, so then I can look at them as I'm taking them out of the powder measure, and I can look at them again as a completed whole uh, load block here. So what I'm gonna do is make sure I'm, these are the ones that we put primers in, these are all done. I'm always gonna double check and make sure I see a primer there. Uh, insert the uh, cartridge into the powder powder measure make a drop I'm visually looking and I'm gonna work through this entire load block in this fashion and then once I have it filled I'm gonna do another inspection and double check my powder you cannot look you cannot over inspect your reloads guys so keep that in mind anytime that you can find an opportunity to do a quality check you want to do it take advantage of it you know make sure that you're devoting your full attention to what you're doing and I know me doing this video in charging powder is maybe not the best example but uh, I'm uh, not preaching it either but I'm gonna finish these up and then we're gonna do another inspection all right, guys, so we got powder and everything, and we're going to take this, this opportunity here. We're going to look at each and every cartridge 
making sure we have powder. Uh, we're not going to be able to pick up a couple tints with our eyes, but we can see some some gross um, issues if, if we're at a half a charge or whatever. We're going to be able to see that. And this is also a good chance to go ahead, verify all of your case mounts, double checking for splits, um, bumps in your shoulder, splits in your shoulder, or even uh, dents. I mean, this is a good chance to put your eyeballs on it while you got them all sitting here and you got a good light source. All right, let's load one of these up. I'm grabbing one of our charge cases out of our load block. We're gonna put our bullet in, run it up into our seating die. Good, full, solid stroke that you're gonna repeat over and over through this process. Index over to our crimp die, or I should say our combo seating die that we're just using the crimp feature in. I'm gonna double check our overall length real quick. All right, so 2.2395, we were shooting for 224. Uh, I can live with uh, a few 10,000. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get to loading these up. All right, guys, we're going to keep moving on with our 223s here. And uh, a couple of things about this uh, turret that I really like is uh, I have it mounted on an inline fabrication ultra mount. Um, I do have the quick change plate on it. Sometimes I like to swap my um, RCBS rock chuck over here and I'm probably gonna go ahead and swap over my my XL750 uh, to the ultra mount with the uh, quick change plates. Um, that way I can move things around. Um, I'm working on getting a, a little bit better or cleaner reloading room and do away with these individual benches and do one long bench, but uh, I won't bore you guys with all that. But, uh, you know, another thing about this I really like is uh, I have this acro bin attachment here and it just makes accessing components real easy. And I'm a tall guy, if you haven't figured that out yet, and I prefer to reload while I'm standing up. And it's just a preference I have and um, you know the ultra mount gets this uh, gets this press up nice and high, and I have it lit up with a, uh, a it's basically a drill press light on a magnet, and I have them on all of my presses, and uh, it really lights up the cartridge. I can still see down in the case mouth, so again I'm looking I'm looking at powder as I'm running, so. Essentially, I've looked at each cartridge three times. I've looked at the powder three times. And I've said this before earlier in the video. See, this is why you don't talk and reload. I forgot to index over my turret. But uh, like I said before, you cannot over inspect. And in fact, the more you inspect, the better reloader you're going to be. A safer reloader. So I hope you guys enjoyed this this series. I know it was a little bit shorter, but uh, you know, two two three isn't complicated. Uh, it is. It's pro it's one of those cartridges. You know, when you when you have the crimps involved and things like that, it's probably one of the worst rifle cartridges to reload. But it's just such a fun cartridge to shoot. And, you know, right now with ammo prices the way they are, it's cheaper to reload them, especially if you got access to range brass and stuff like I do. But uh, that's going to wrap this video up, guys. If you guys have any questions on this series or something else you'd like to see in the future, hit me up at, uh, on my email at squatchreloading at gmail.com. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Squatch Reloading, of course, right here on YouTube, also at the Reloaders Network. So uh, go over there and check that out if you're a new reloader. Lots of good information over there. But um, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And uh, until next time, guys, God bless.